A year ago, we followed the life and times of crime lord Dominic Noonan as he went about his racketeering, his social work and his criminality all under the watchful eye of the police. Now we return once again to the streets of Manchester and explore the lives of one of Britain's most feared crime families. Fuck off out there now, you three. Go right down there and wait by the fucking car. Don't let no one leave and don't let no one enter. It's a long fucking walk back to Manchester. Dominic Noonan has spent half his life in jail and has been convicted of bank robbery, prison escape, firearms, and has been implicated, though never convicted, of drug trafficking and six gangland murders. Face justice! Face justice! We last saw him as he evaded a 20-year jail sentence on a £600,000 heroin charge after witness irregularities. The close shave was celebrated by Dominic and his extended family. True to form, Dominic is now facing more serious charges involving kidnapping, brutal torture and a half a million pounds ransom. As ever, Dominic protests his innocence and fully expects to be acquitted. I'm in God's hands, that's, that's life. The witnesses don't want to come to court, they don't have to come to court. <laughs> While on bail, he remains in true gangster style, a pillar of the community, sponsoring a Halloween party for the children on his patch. Despite his generosity, the people of Salford and Moston, his family's strongholds, are well aware that he's a dangerous racketeer and major underworld player. Since coming out of prison in 2002, after a 10-year stretch, he has styled himself a security expert and developed an unhealthy interest in uniforms, old police cars, security vans and ambulances. There's going to be 11 of these in the next few weeks. We're going to uh, convert them into cash carrying vans. The, uh, these back doors will be sealed up. These are getting sealed up with steel inside it. And then we got all this coming out and building cages here. One man will remain in the back of the van. One man gets out. We'll lift up the shutters, drop the money in or out, put it down. We're offering a cheaper service because I think security car and uh, Group 4 are too expensive. Despite his long criminal record, Dominic is taking advantage of his standing in the community and opening his own community police station, offering protection, security and banking services. Many locals have already signed up for Dominic's protection and financial services, much to the distress of Greater Manchester Police. There's 75 quid each, then. It is secure because they've got to get the fencing up yet. Yeah, it's got cameras in it. All bulletproof windows going on this side. They can't sled through it. Same with this here. You can't come through this side. The desk going here. And they, and they just hand the money out. There'll be little shutters on them. Put the bags out to them. There's also 5,000 safe deposit boxes going in downstairs. So you can leave all your deeds in there, your passports, anything of value. Half of them will probably put drugs and guns in them. We advise not to leave any money. Oh, Julie, because we're not taking responsibility for it. This is my undercover unit. What's that love for washing your windows? Oh, nice one. Just wash your windows. With imprisonment an occupational hazard for Dominic's crew, there's a steady turnover of young associates. Aaron leads the new breed. Dominic and his entourage have recently moved into a newly built bungalow in a secluded cul-de-sac. While this is the only house that Dominic officially has in his name, it's understood 
his many hidden stakes in nightclubs, pubs and apartments in the northwest of England. Polish food paid for by me, by the generosity again. Are you eating that song a lot? Apart from a security crew of young men, the key people in Dominic's daily life are his godson Paul, his nephew, the singer Sean, and his son Bugsy. The Noonan family have been the scourge of Manchester police for over 30 years. As bank robbers, they have allegedly stolen over four and a half million pounds. Between them, the Noonan brothers have been sentenced to over 85 years in jail. Yeah, let's do one about the prisoner's song years ago. It's called Standing Here Naked. It's about the strip cells. Standing here naked, my balls are on the floor. To shoes says my body, to most I'm at the door. They laugh and they say, the governors, they fuck you. Your body's out of violation. Local drug dealer. Yeah, Stop it. That, don't be that bit beyond. These kids have been selling drugs around there. I tell them not to sell them because they don't listen. Nah, they're having you over my own, dude. This guy's the like biggest that. drug dealer in Manchester, mate. He keeps on the deal, though, this guy. So I'm saying, do I look like a drug dealer? Have you seen me? Come on. They know you're lying now. Aaron, a young associate of Dominic, is carving out his own reputation as a drug dealer and wannabe gangster. Little grass out you, Michael. I was getting arrested, never gets charged. You know what it is with him, he's known as what you call a sweet grass. Do you mean a sweet grass? He says things pretending like, oh, we know, but then the police get to hear the bell. Sure! I'll say on camera, he has slept with me. So Don't chat shit, oh no! <laughs> Why have you gone red? <laughs> I had 12 of these cups from the first coming in, I've got fucking two left. Although it wasn't always the case, Dominic is now exclusively gay. Fucking not watch nothing, then, little bastard. Oi, who's at the cakes? Being serious now, fuck the camera. Who's at, me? Not me. Who's at me cakes now? Someone has at me fingers. I had one coconut cake. Why? Why? To my cakes. You didn't ask I'll for permission. Fucking go buy them back. Double fucking back. Oh, yes. when did you get arrested for the uh, breach of bail? Yes, so I've been arrested for breach of bail done. twice. Dom got me out the first time, said you have to release him now because he tried to keep him me. Illegally, illegally tried to keep him me. Dom was my solicitor. That was, that was I said, are you going to get him in court tomorrow, Sunday? Don't think so. <laughs> what was the, the charge you are on bail for? Um, assault, um, criminal damage. Dominic, I could be talking to a younger version of you here. Better looking, get right. I am better looking. Dom serves and protects, we just serve. <laughs> As one of Manchester's most high profile gangsters, Dominic Noonan surrounds himself with young men. But pride of place on the mantelpiece is reserved for Bugsy, his 11 year old son. It's the only picture I've got, it's of my little Bugsy. Looking sweet and innocent, but a little fucking bastard. <laughs> <laughs>
Eileen Noonan, Dominic's cousin and Sean's mom, runs an open house for friends and family. Bugsy, Dominic's son, often spends weekends there. Is this the extended family? You have always have a bit of a clan around you, don't you? Yeah, most of the time, yeah. Some guys trying to be Elvis, pen. look. Oh, no. Oh, look, Elvis oh, yes, Presley. Like... <laughs> <laughs> no you go, boy. Do you think um, Sean would make it the next factor? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You'd get... You'd have a good course, go, wouldn't it? Would. I thought, oh, because he's got people there as well, isn't there? Oh, cheers. Oh, yeah. yeah. she's got a lot of confidence. Yeah, there is competition. <laughs> He's right. There is oh, some, yeah. there's some good people knocking about. He's right to say that. Yeah, I'm joking. Is it difficult bringing up kids these days? It is, really. It's difficult enough when you've got... All the things that we want. Mother and father. And There's a lot of people that have only one parent family. No, and it must be a lot difficult for them. The things that we want. Very difficult. No, let's reverse that question. No, you can't always have what you want in life, carry on. We do our best to get what we can when we can get it. Them. They've not been brought up to get everything they want. Even if they had the money, I wouldn't give it them. Bugsy, how many sausage do you want? Paddy can't work cos he's ill. I can't work either. We'll do our best, you know what I mean? Have you seen these? Eileen's son, Sean, the young singer, has just got his GCSE results. F in music, you should be ashamed of yourself, lad. It's so pass. Do you mean it's still a pass? It's so pass. And F? A to F is a pass. Yeah, F for fool. <laughs> My dreams are to be a boxer because I've always liked it since I was younger. I don't make it a big boxer. Go for football. Steven Robinson. Is, has he died? Dominic's protege, Aaron, is ambitious and freelances on the street as he attempts to build his own reputation as a player. I started off as a grafter, I started off working for someone else. If I owned a dancer, I would go round the corner, pass them to someone, go back and we'd have bare dough. We'd have bare money in our pocket. So then, then, like, after about a couple of weeks spent passing, I thought, yeah, man, I like this, but I'm not, like, passing him all the dough, because I used to pass him a big one of change. I thought, I'm not liking it, you know, I'm not, not going to pass it him. Just what about all the smack heads that he had, I started giving them out. And then they met me, he had a bit of conflict saying he was going to do this, he was going to do that. So he said, right, we'll bring it. I said, you want you got to bring it, come and do it. So I just got my boys and that together. Got a few little weapons, went round. I had a scrap with him, bit his face off, end of subject. He just quit, he didn't want no anymore. Now, there's worse of things going on. People were chopping and shooting people, I only smashed one person's head in. But I took over his one patch, that's all I needed then. I would chop you in half just for a reputation. It's money and drugs and power. Because people fear us and they know what we'll do to them. Greater Manchester Police have issued a warning over the plague of feral teenagers they claim are terrorising the community. Aaron is unmoved. Yo, is that chip you open up there? Well, no, what's up now? Well, oh, they've gone off over the week. I've got to keep them out now, Dom. Do us a favour, ring them up to get this bottom down, Dom. They've got to just fucking keep out. They're going to cost me a pub here, mate. No, that'll go on something for you. Thanks, kiddo. Dominic Noonan, community fixer and gangland enforcer, tries to keep the next generation safe. Hey, Dominic, you're going to come with me, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to come with you. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm going to come with you. Yeah, I'm going to come with you. They've been fighting again, yeah? It happened the other day, fucking windows got broke again and fucking bottles. You... Yeah, they are. No, you... Fine, you're embarrassing me, I swear to God, you're embarrassing the fucking family name. Our own daughter's embarrassing her, our own daughter's... Never that. mind her daughter, we've got a better name than that. Fucking idiots now, innit? That's all they're saying about is up that end, you're just idiots. I'm not last. 
Not asked. Well, what? don't drag my fucking brother's name through the mud then, yeah? What? Carry on. Paul, Dominic's godson, is in trouble at school. I was having five, and just because I got the better of him, he started crying and ran to the teacher and said, bad him. So, what did Mrs. Roberts say to you? Well, I don't want you on my premises, I went on a golden. How long for? Seven days, she said. His face went dead red and started crying, and it was still red when he told the teachers that. Well, I told you to stop messing about toy fighting before. Even at the house, when you start getting there, you start fucking crying. Yeah, that's what happens. Dominic has other, more serious problems. His older brother, Desmond, a hitman and enforcer, is now hooked on crack cocaine. He's out of control and upsetting other underworld figures in the city. Not seeing him, he's probably uh, on the rock somewhere. He's, uh, he's disappeared. He comes out when he's got no money. And then he uh, manages to get some. Has he just lost on the, on the crack there, do then? <sighs> totally gone off the rails. He's uh, it's on drugs. It's a shame, really. He's, he has such a big name. And uh, no, his name's shit. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a dangerous drug to mess around with. People say, oh, you should help him. You can't. They've got to say it themselves, they've got to say, that's it, I'm fucking finished. And he keeps telling me, uh, I'm off it, I've been off it now five, six weeks, but he hasn't, he's a fucking liar. He's always lying, he's a, he, they're always born liars, them kind of people. Dominic has his own troubles. He and six other co-defendants have been accused of kidnapping and brutally torturing an underworld figure for a ransom of £500,000. Once again, another Noonan trial and no witnesses. <laughs> just lucky, aren't we? Just lucky people. It's not just one witness, I understand. It's eight. seven or eight. Eight. Eight witnesses have decided to leave the country. All of them have left the country. That has been confirmed by the courts. They must have had a, I don't know, a tour package. They must have got a cheap deal. The more gold, the cheaper it is, isn't it? Dominic's co-defendants arrive at court. The judge was to hear that the victim was left with dozens of stab wounds, was tortured with boiling water, and had cigarette burns all over his body. While Dominic's case grinds on, the police inevitably turned their attention to his young associate, Aaron. We don't like the police, we just wrapped up. Open the door. Mike! Big kid, Mike! Come, yeah. cool. 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 No, Volvo, you big Yo, fuck me. Yeah. And he's still there? Yeah. Oh, he's coming out to wind them up then. Paul's getting nicked. <laughs> As the police depart, the young guns contemplate life with Dominic behind bars. Say if it don't go down, don't know, I, I will take over at the end of the day, it'll be mine. Everything will be mine. Yeah, if it, if it gets Aaron's ambition to take over Dominic's territory looks more probable as the absent witnesses in Dominic's kidnapping and torture trial are brought to court by the police. The case is against me is that I'm in possession of a telephone which can be linked to the persons who have abducted somebody. But so what, a phone? So that, that you could have ended up with that phone. It's like me now giving you the phone. And then a week later, you're arrested and you've got to explain where's it come from. Now they've asked for police protection on the jury. I mean, what, what's all that about? What are they trying to say? That we're going to intimidate the jury? Desmond Noonan comes out of the shadows to rally around his younger brother, Dominic, as the threat of conviction looms. You coming down the court tomorrow? Alex. <laughs> My lad, tell her. <laughs> the jury in Dominic's torture and kidnapping trial are shortly to be sent out to reach their verdicts. The evidence implicating him in the brutal events appears compelling. 
but Dominic has an experienced legal team and remains defiantly optimistic. Get them fucking dogs up. Get this airy fucking monster up. How did your barrister sum up for you? Summed up very well. I was fairly surprised because uh, he convinced me that I wasn't there. That's how good he was. Do you think he convinced the jury you weren't there? You've only got to put doubt in one mind. Dominic Noonan is facing 20 years in jail if convicted. He's accused of leading a gang of men to kidnap and torture another underworld figure for a half a million pounds ransom. Three police forces and the National Crime Squad worked on the case. Sensationally, the public gallery is closed after concerns that Desmond Noonan, Dominic's brother, is intimidating the jury a crime he has previously been convicted of. After two days of discussion, the jury returned to find five of Dominic's gang guilty, but they could not decide on the fate of the crime boss. You never know with the juries. Like I said, they find guilty people, innocent, and innocent people guilty. Finally, after a week of deliberations, the jury decide on Dominic Noonan's future. Little bit to me, little Noonan set off, and I'm coming on. I said to them cops when I left that courtroom, walked right up to him in the, in, the, in the box. I said, "You went for me, you lost. You're a fucking rat." Probably, uh, yeah, it's the uh, jury. I want to know where the payment is. Hello? In less than a year, Dominic Noonan has now walked free from two major trials, costing over £5 million. He and his brother Desi remain the chief targets of Manchester Police and are now under constant surveillance. Excuse me. You go on. Can I have a, pot, a pot, bottle of Bex, please? Another escape from the jaws of justice reinforced the Noonan's apparent invincibility. We're not dinosaurs and we'll never be extinct. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not we have luck, it's just the jury believes that we're innocent people. Will someone ever take a Noonan in Manchester? I hope so, I hope it's me first. I'm fucking fed up, I'm fucking fed up, but I've got no money. I've got a pot to piss in, got a shitty car, married, kids, mortgage, fed up. If you don't anyone think of the set of Noonan's out, if you met me first, please please do it as quickly as possible. In fact, I'll even come to you if I have to. Just give us a phone call, I'll meet you anywhere you want, and make sure it's behind the back of the ear and it's fucking clean. And don't let me linger for fuck's sake, I'm a whinging bastard. <laughs> but please met me the first. But in the meantime, you want to set Dominic before me, then you can have him. <laughs> you can't take any Noonan's, we've not done anything to be took out, have we? No one wants to hurt us at the end of the day. And if they did, by God, there'd be some fucking, there'd be some fireworks. Would there? Oh, I've got a bigger army than the police. We've got more guns than the police, silly <laughs> bastards. I'm down to 20, 25 murders. Well, wow, a load of bollocks, innit? 24, wasn't it, you know? No, I didn't do 24. And uh, what you call <laughs> How many was it alleged you did? Oh, for loads. It's, it's, it's police, the police, the police that threatened 24. Did that, I'm behind them. I'm, did, did that, I'm behind most of the murders in Manchester. And how are you? No. He's a good Catholic, believes in life. I'm a Catholic. I don't believe in life for the life. I don't believe in taking life. <laughs> Within weeks of the trial, Desmond Noonan was attacked and stabbed on the streets of northwest Manchester. Could that someone be Magda Knight. Now, Dominic, tell me what happened. I just got a phone call. A friend just saying that uh, he's just been stopped in the last 10, 15 minutes of that. So he's just been stopped and she had a phone call of him saying he was dying in the street. And he called me, she said he's lying on the floor now, he's got something, you know. I don't know what to do. Jesus Christ. He's not going to die, is he? No, 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 no. He's fucking trouble if he does. He's a lot of trouble if he does. 
big size London's product blue lane. Let's check it first. I seen two ambulances pulling up a few seconds behind each other. The first one stopped, and then as he opened the door, I just saw a man laying on there. I couldn't see his face. I didn't think that was Desi at first. Just then, I saw all the police surrounding that ambulance. Then I said to a cop, "Is that Desi Noonan?" He went, "Yeah, why?" I said, "He's my brother." They started pumping on him. The doctors got in there, started pressing on him and that. I was just seeing that he was dead. I could see that he was dead. His stomach had swollen up. It looked like uh, I mean, he was a big lad anyway, but he looked twice the size. And then afterwards, when I got told that he, he bled inside, I realised then why he'd swollen up. Because all the blood stayed inside and didn't go anywhere. boasted he was untouchable and laughed when asked about his involvement in gangland killings in Manchester. This is the he spot was where the 45-year-old was stabbed twice, once in the stomach on the Mersey Bank Avenue in Charlton, where they found Desmond Noonan lying with two stab wounds in his abdomen. in the stomach near his home in Charlton just days before he was due to feature in a fly in the wall documentary. Tonight, police said there'd be a large number of extra patrols in the Charlton area over the next few days to reassure members of the community. I went to the scene where it happened. Within minutes I found out who'd done it. His history. He'll, uh, he's finished, he knows he's finished. That's just life. I was in shock, I, I mean, I was still... I had a beer the night before when I was still feeling the beer and as soon as I got told it was like sober straight away. Phone Dom, just said Dom, said I feel about you lost and that. Nothing much you could say really, you don't know what to say when things like that happen but... It's been massive for three months. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. Obviously if Damien's was big and dead, obviously... People Desi's I've never even met not turn up. With people being killed like Desi and that, it makes you realise if such a big guy was killed and, and if he was killed it makes you think, Yo, well I could be next. For someone that big can get took away like that, we we can get took away a lot, hell of a lot quicker. We're like where he started. We're at the beginning. We're in we're in the prime. You know what I mean? We're just up and coming. Eventually, we might be like him. We might be bigger than him. We might be nowhere near him. We might be dead. They're the original ones. They're where we've got it from. They're who we've watched and thought we could do that. We'll try that. If they can do it, we can do it. That's Anyone right. can do it. You've got, a, you've got a set of balls, yeah? No, you've got it. What Simple. you got to understand is when Desert and all these gangsters that you call gangsters, when they was kids, yeah, they had holes in their roofs. They didn't have no food or they did what they did to survive. We do it for, we do it for a the, rush. We do it for the, the adrenaline, the actual rush of taking someone else's things off him. Bam, as easy as that. I say we do about 30 robberies and we'll get caught for one. And you're talking like at least 10 grand each robbery. Is it, did anyone ever teach you different things in writing and No. No one teaches us how to read, never mind writing and We can't read, we can't write, we can't money though. Are we going grafting then or what? We'll see this face on Crown Watch UK. As head of the family, Dominic is responsible for the funeral arrangements. Now, oh, Dominic, the uh, the casket that you've chosen, yeah. this this is the one here. Right. It's called uh, Pieta, the Last Supper coffin. It's got all the bronze handles, corner pieces. They're the best ones you got. You can't get anything better. Your you your lads are going to uh, carry the coffin to the hearse. Yeah, my lads will be carrying it. Because it's quite a big man. Yeah. He's quite a big man, he's dead such them and move them. Dominic, as head of the family, takes centre stage, but his preparations are interrupted by a death threat. Did a guy get murdered yesterday? Well, he, I believe he's been shot dead yesterday. Yeah, good friend of ours, well, we received a threatening letter today saying that's all next, because there's the old money. I've doubled all my guards and I've doubled my fucking vests. How many is allowed in the car? Six in the back. Yeah. We can get an extra person in the front. Yeah, I want, I want a guard to go in each car. 
motorways, schools and businesses have closed for the day out of respect and safety. An investigation is underway into why two Manchester high schools decided to close during the funeral of a self-confessed gangster. The numbers here have been swelled by a controversial decision which has angered many parents. It's nothing to do with the children. They should let the uh, kids uh, carry on to school. It's only a fella that died. Some estimates have suggested that up to 3,000 people would die. Some estimates suggested that up to 3,000 people would attend this funeral. In fact, the figures... Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Desmond in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A friend to the family sends a clear message to the murderer during the Requiem Mass. But notwithstanding where we are, I will say this, for me, Forgive me, fathers. For me, there is no forgiveness for the perpetrator. And there is no forgetting for the perpetrator. Wherever he or they may ever reside, that is my position. Thirty limousines and a 25-strong band, mostly made up of police and firemen, prepare for the five-mile march to the cemetery. For the Noonans, the funeral is a chance to mourn and a chance to demonstrate their strength. Desmond left behind a wife ex-wife and four children. His relations have travelled from Ireland, the US and Holland to pay their respects. Bugsy, Paul and Sean, the next generation, are at the forefront of the occasion. The cortege, under constant police supervision and covert observation, march through northwest Manchester. In a minute, I want you to get up there, take the lads in the blues and the yellows, and don't let no one up that path. Say only immediate family around the grave first, the rest come in. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers in behalf of your servant Desmond. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he desired to do your will. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I stayed clear, I stayed my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full, I've traveled each and every highway, oh more, much more than this. I did it my way For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself Then he has not To see the world 
he truly feels and not the words of one who kneels the record shows I took the blows and did it my way Struggling with the occasion, Paul seeks comfort from his godfather Dominic. A man has been arrested and is now being questioned by police. Two people have been charged in connection with Desi Noonan's death. A 41-year-old Manchester man has been charged with Desmond Noonan's murder. Bath time. And it's the first bath of have had. Look at them. They're like drowning rats trying to get out. <laughs> Shut up. Come on. Careful what you film here. I don't want the RSPCA on my case. <laughs> in the microwave for 30 seconds. One's missing. Since the funeral, Paul has been spending less and less time with his godfather, Dominic. A court has been hearing how Mr Noonan was allegedly killed by his drug supplier. The court heard that on the night of March 18th, Desi Noonan had been drinking heavily. He'd then gone out in search of cocaine. An hour later, he was dead. A drug dealer who stabbed a Manchester criminal to death has been jailed for at least 15 years. Today, jailed for life with a minimum of 15 years behind bars. Former bouncer Derek McDuffus killed Des after years of bad blood between the pair. Derek McDuffus was convicted of the murder of Desmond Noonan and sentenced to 18 years. Within hours of arriving at Strangeways Prison, he was brutally assaulted. After weeks in the hospital wing, he has now been moved to an undisclosed location. Someone whacks him, we whack him. He's got a fuck all to do with me, but uh, good luck to him anyway. The amounts of people that have come up and told me how much they want to kill him. You don't think there's been enough killing? It's only just begun. It's only just begun. Just three months after Dominic was acquitted of the kidnap and torture charges, he's been arrested again, this time on firearms charges. On, FM, on digital and online, BBC Radio Cleveland, news update. Good evening, I'm Ian Kenyon. Three men from Manchester have been charged with firearms offences after they were stopped by police in Durham. A spokesman for Durham Police say they were arrested after ammunition and a gun were recovered from a Jaguar car on the 8167 in Darlington. Noonan was charged under his deed pole, the quiet name, Lantley Fort Foy. This is me undercover unit. <laughs> he was arrested in the company of his young associates, 17-year-old Adam Walsh and 19-year-old Aaron Berry. The arrest followed a long-term surveillance operation by Greater Manchester Police. Unusually for Dominic, he has not been granted bail. The Home Office have designated him one of the country's most dangerous prisoners and have placed him in the high security wing of Wakefield Prison. Dominic, what happened with the arrest? Tell me. Uh, I've gone up there on the fucking Sunday. I was under surveillance when they left me house in the morning at half eight. They said they've had me under surveillance for months. They had police saying they saw us get out of the car, lift the bonnet up. And what kind of gun was it, Dominic? 
Um, just normal revolver with five bullets, found in the bonnet area, hidden inside the fucking battery compartment. So how are conditions in the prison for you? Well, I'm on a unit, high risk, fucking. Not had one single visit yet, Donald. They keep knocking people fucking back. They won't let me have any visits, and off, they just stitch me up. Bugsy is receiving bereavement counselling following the death of his uncle Desmond, a key male role model in his life. His father, Dominic, is now back in jail, as he has been for most of Bugsy's 11 years. Well, I love him because he's in my dad and... That's it, really, because I love him and that's it. No matter what he does? No matter what he does. He's still, he's still probably there for me. Bugsy. B-U-G-S-Y, Bugsy. Told his mum to get his passport done and everything. So I'm going to fuck it off. You know what, when I go, I'm not bringing him back. He's not coming back. Right. not being brought up in this fucking shit hole. In all your time, how long have you spent with him? Like two years, because I've done fucking six months on remand on the last one, didn't it? Two years in, uh, out, of, out of 11 years. Told me to cut the bottom off with the tomato ketchup on when you turn. Sada. <laughs> Any plans for when Dominic gets out of jail? Let's take him on holiday. Carry on. Where's he going to take you? Anywhere where I want. You plan to do it on holiday, Bugs? Um, I'd be going to Jamaica. Jamaica? Jamaica. Put me in your suitcase. What? Put me in your suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a suitcase. <laughs> Don't you start, you. I want my family to be uh, careful and don't tell people what they're doing because it's their business and, as you know, you might, you might say it to the wrong person and it might crash you up to the police and get you arrested. Dominic Noonan and his two associates are charged with possession of a 9mm converted revolver and five rounds of ammunition. Unprecedented security arrangements are put in place to bring the Manchester crime lord to court. The courthouse is surrounded by 23 armed guards after police receive intelligence that Dominic Noonan may be orchestrating an escape attempt. Bugsy, too young to attend, goes paintballing with friends instead. All right, you need to listen to this, Craig. These paintballs are extra hard today. We're sure going to be cold, so you're going to be in lots of pain, I'm sorry to say. I don't want to see anyone shooting dead people. <laughs> <laughs> The prosecution case against Dominic and his associates is strong. A long-term police surveillance operation claims to have filmed the three placing a gun inside the car. Manchester police are quietly confident that Dominic Noonan will not escape British justice this time. After four days of legal argument, two of Dominic's co-defendants, Aaron Berry and Adam Walsh, plead guilty. But Dominic, maybe they pleaded guilty because they are guilty. Are you guilty? Would I say I'm guilty on the phone? No. Right, then don't ask a stupid question. I tell you. After a four-day trial, the jury returned their verdict in just 15 minutes. Flatley, 44, your beak up street in Manchester, was found guilty of possessing a firearm and ammunition without a licence. The judge described Dominic Noonan as a dangerous man and sentenced him to 16 and a half years in jail. What do you think a gangster is? 
for the go around killing people, but not for no reason, for a reason, it has to be for a reason. Like, say, for all the money or something like that. With remission, time served, and concurrent sentencing, Dominic Noonan will serve just three years and nine months in prison. I can't help it, can I? He's a gangster, he's a gangster. Um, and that's it, really.